Good afternoon. Um, in my previous video, I did a on alcohol inks. I, I kind of skipped over some stuff and didn't do a very good job. So I had a project that I'm working on that I've got a. I'm going to be putting a band of of marbling around the this hollow form, and um, I thought maybe I'd shoot video of it so you could get a little bit better idea of what I do. Um, uh, when I get set up for the Actually, let me start where I started here. Uh, I've defined the area with uh, a V tool. Uh, it's just an old gouge that I've converted into a three three wing tool. I don't know if you can see that very well. Uh, pretty common tool, but this is where I want to band the whole piece all the way around and. Uh, I've go ahead. I've sanded through 320 and uh, sealed it with uh, nitrocellulose sanding sealer, and then I re uh, toothed it with uh, 600 grit. And we'll go ahead and mount this up and get this going. Uh, let me get the uh, inks out, and uh, I'll come back when I'm ready to start. Thanks. All right. Start off. Um, I'm using uh, these are artisan uh, aniline dyes, alcohol based. Uh, they're available at Craft Supply. Um, I, I'm going to use that as a base underneath um, to get uh, uh, a dark purple color of mixed red and blue. Um, that's pretty much what these are for. And the alcohol inks that I'm going to be using today are by Tim Holtz. Or a Ranger. I've got a uh, sailboat blue, possibly slate, the mixative uh, silver, which has uh, got actual metallic in it. You can, it's got a bead in it, you know, mix it. And then purple twilight. And I'll also be using the blending solution if I can get it on the camera. There we go. Um, and isopropyl alcohol in a spritzer. That pretty much covers what I'll be using today. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, put my purple down on this. I don't need to see that. This is ash, by the way. And I'm not real uh, concerned about getting a nice even coat. Um, I will have to redefine these two grooves when I'm done, just because I'm bound to get something in there. Being that it's underneath the marbling inks, the, the consistency of the color is not real important. It's just a base coat. Get some color behind it. I think I mixed up plenty. <laughs> I'll bring you back when I get this done. Um, this is kind of tedious. So, okay, we got it covered now. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put a little heat to it, make it dry a little faster. <laughs> a bit of dust.
this stuff, unlike uh, the alcohol inks, has a binder in it. It's, uh, I believe it's shellac. Okay, I'll probably start with the, the silver mix it to, since I don't really want to see a lot of that, and it's the lightest of all of them. Now, as far as application, you can put, this is the uh, applicator I have, it's actually by Tim Holtz also. And it's merely a Velcro on a wooden block with a, a felt uh, on it. And um, you can put the, you can drop your drops of alcohol ink on there and dab it on. You can put a line across and smear it you, pretty much any way you want. You can use a toothpick, anything you want to put it to get it on there with. I kind of myself like the randomness of the dabber. And you know, you place your dots in a random fashion on there. And you can do it with multiple colors at the same time, or one color, pretty much any way you want to. And it's kind of through trial and error and experimentation that you come up with something that works for you. And this mixative stuff, unlike the regular inks, with the metallic, a little bit goes a long ways. It's very... Um, Intense, let's just say. And if I happen to get some on the sealed portion that I've left natural, I'm not real concerned about it. I'll just sand it off. It never looks really, uh, <laughs> it always looks like a disaster until you start, towards the end, you start using your blending solutions and they, they kind of cause this stuff to melt together a little bit where it's not so definitive in each little line part. I don't know if that makes any sense, but I think that's enough. Silver. And I'll use the same pad because these are all going to be going together anyways. I mean, if you wanted to keep your colors really separate, I guess you'd have to swap them out. I've never done that. But we're going to start with sailboat blue. I'll go with five drops. Well, make that six. See how it picks up on that silver also? It's not very intense.
Okay. <coughs> we move on to the slate. Now I'm going to take a little blending solution and I'm going to put it right on my pad. Just four drops. And I'm going to move around the piece. So. I'll zoom in and let you see what it's doing. You see how it's causing the the inks to move? And a little bit of this goes a long way as you get too much and you you'll really get it. Uh, it almost like uh, spreads it out and it becomes really dull in some areas and then a real thick line, kind of like a cell almost in painting. See, that's a little too much right here. I'll just come back through there and pick it up. It'll almost leave like a definitive line that to me. I don't like that.
Okay, I think we're pretty much done with the alcohol inks. Now I just need to spritz it a couple of times. And that, to me, that's how I blend it finally. And just a little bit, again, goes a long ways. See how it bleeds? You want to kind of leave it alone for a second and let it settle a little bit before you spin it if you're working in the round like this. You could uh, hit it with heat too. Some folks will actually uh, flame it off. I'm not real comfortable doing that. So, just burning off the excess alcohol. I'm going to get uh, cleaned up a little bit here and then we'll uh, redefine these grooves and and uh, we can put a coat of finish on it. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, redefine the band uh, just using the V-tool or I think they're called three-point tools. <laughs> Mine's homemade anyway so it's just an old bowl or uh, spindle gouge. I make contact. I'm gonna rock back and forth just a little bit. In there.
got it. That should work. Yeah, I think that's going to be alright. Alright, let's put a core finish on it. When you, uh, when you lacquer them or, you know, if you're using water-based acrylic or whatever you're using, the, uh, the colors really start, they, they seem to grab together a little bit more depth. They look kind of, they look better. Well, there's the finished piece. Let me see if we can get a decent view of it. Bear in mind my lighting's not the greatest. You can see the grain comes through. And I coated it with uh, this stuff here. Well, hopefully I've been able to be a little more thorough in covering what's going on with this. Uh, it's not real complicated. If I can do it, anybody can. Um, and uh, I'll see you next time.